Well, coming up on today's show, Jay Leno chats with Tesla's chief designer. A $25,000 Tesla is teased by Elon Musk. And why are EV car clubs on the rise? Well, first of all, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are in the world, hello and welcome to the Sunday, the 19th of August edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. First up, a really quick announcement. Well, for long-time listeners of the show, way back on the 30th of June, six weeks ago, I asked if a new website called myev.com would take the time to have a chat to me and find out more information for you, the listener, about what their new website was all about. Because I like the look of it. They kindly made time for us. And we had an informative chat about buying and selling used electric vehicles and learning more about EVs in general. And the more I thought about it, the more I realised that this is one of the final pieces in the jigsaw. Uh, Like regular buying and selling websites, certainly here in the UK, just aren't up to scratch for EVs. I mean, you can kind of find them, but you can't even narrow it down to what kind of size battery the EV has got. They're just not fit for purpose. So anyway, I was talking to the gang at myev.com and the kind of the way that it's the first proper marketplace for EVs and they've made this totally free place that you can go to buy and sell your cars, makes it really simple and kind of the convenience of a dealer but on your fingertips. So I genuinely believe This is one of the final big pieces of the puzzle. You can get your hands on a new electric car because the dealers will sell you one, but then there's that whole used market that is now just kicking into gear as those cars that were new a couple of years ago are coming off leases or people are paying them off and now they want to buy a new one so they need to sell their EV. There is now this dedicated place to do it. And a lot of people don't want to buy a brand new car as well. They don't want the hit on depreciation from a brand new car. But, oh man, that new car smell, you would argue, is worth every penny. So, I think a strong second-hand market in every country around the world is going to be really important so people can get into driving an electric car at a lower price point. Anyway, I was, I, I'm making a short story long now, by the way. I was talking to them about this, and I'm super pumped because they've agreed uh, to come on board with the podcast. We stayed in touch, and now we're at a point where uh, we're going to work together, which is really good news. So if you're listening on YouTube, you'll notice a little bit of their branding around on the podcast. You might see it on my Twitter as well. In return, they're going to be providing things like a question of the week. So of all the different people they come across every week that are buying and selling used cars, and of course, myev.com is just North America at the moment i'm sure they will expand at some point uh we'll get to learn something along the way as well because they'll be letting me know the questions that are most asked by their website users and i'm going to pass them on to you for you to answer well stick around at the end of today's show we've got our very first uh, question of the week first of all the big news the big interview Yes, that was with Marquez Brownlee talking to Elon Musk. But you know what I'm going to get so much pleasure out of? Watching Jay Leno talk to Tesla's chief designer about the 2020 Tesla Roadster. The next generation Roadster has been described by Elon Musk as a hardcore smackdown to gas-powered cars. Wow. I mean, I've heard the rumors. He also said it will be the fastest production car ever made, period. Big talk, but if everything he says is true, it will outperform all competing supercars at just a fraction of the cost. Very impressive. And this will have all the features, obviously, the S has. Absolutely. Autopilot, auto emergency braking, the fun performance. You know, it's a driver's car. It's three motors in this car, two in the rear and one in the front. 10,000 meters of torque at the wheels. What's your top speed? The top speed is 250 plus. Really? It hurts the the, the fluid in your eyeballs. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) that's almost like fighter plane. At the time of recording, that's Jay Leno's garage hasn't been broadcast, and I'm really looking forward to seeing that online. But getting on to the big interview then, Tesla fan Marquez Brownlee released an in-depth interview with Elon Musk discussing science and tech and other important points that have nothing to do with the painful news that's been around since that New York Times article just a couple of days ago. According to Interesting Engineering, Elon Musk discussed how competitive the automotive manufacturing landscape was and his hopes of bringing 
the design and tech costs down to reach economies of scale. The big headline was a $25,000 Tesla. Now, Elon didn't volunteer that. Marquez did say, could you make a cheaper one? And Elon was like, yeah, of course, it's just about scale and costs coming down. And yes, we can do it. Give us three years. When asked about the firm's near future plans, he said that his team are working uh, to ramp up the production by figuring out ways to make two cars at the same time without compromising on the quality of each car. Well, I guess technically they're making three cars at the moment. And I think what he was probably referring to when he said we've got to make two cars at once, another new car. So Model 3, 400,000 back orders to get through, Tesla Semi or Model Y or something else. Well, Musk also briefly discussed the next-gen Roadster. His company is planning to bring that to production in 2020. Nought to 60, 1.9 seconds. The next-gen Roadster is going to be fitted with a 200 kilowatt hour at least battery pack, and that's 600 miles range. On track mode, which lots of people have been talking about, and I've mentioned on the podcast before because I just want to clarify, track mode is about adding things, not taking them away. A lot of the time in current combustion cars, when you hit the button on the dashboard uh, to sort of enter race mode or track mode, all you're really doing is turning off all the clever computer bits that stop you from going into a hedge on a, a normal rainy day when you're on the roads. However, Tesla's track mode is kind of the opposite. I mean, I'm not saying you'll end up in a hedge. I'm saying they add things. They don't just turn off all the traction control. Elon said this, and I quote, we're basically a bunch of nerds here. With track mode, you can open up a lot of settings. It's basically like an expert user mode, and you can adjust traction control, adjust battery temperature. You can basically configure a bunch of things. It will tell you, if you do this, it's a bit risky, you're going to wear out your brakes a little sooner, you might blow a circuit, but it'll be clear, this is the risk you're taking. It's kind of like if you have a graphics card in your computer, you can go in there and change the settings and overclock it, end quote. And I wonder if that in that, when you watch, I mean, I'm, I'm quoting Elon there, and actually if you watch the interview, you know how people use the word you, you know how I just used it, you know, it's kind of like, People say you, but they don't mean you, the person. So when Elon says you can change different settings, I think, well, I think when I watch the, the impression I get from watching the actual interview is what he means is Tesla can change the settings. There'll be one button called track mode. You push it. You say, yes, I'm taking the risk. And then you enter track mode. What some websites have done today is they've taken Elon saying you can muck about with the settings and they've interpreted that as when track mode gets enabled in Teslas, you, an individual, will be able to have some sort of slider that goes, yes, I want maximum battery cooling, I want kind of middling brake performance, oh, I want, you know, front, uh, sort of front balance on this. And it's, I, that's not how I, when you actually hear how he says it, I don't think he was meaning you, the end, the driver, the consumer, gets to do that. Anyway, we'll see. Well, CNBC took the angle today that it was all about the type of cars that people are trading in to get hold of a Model 3. Certainly in North America, currently one of the top trades is a Toyota Prius. According to statements they made during the August earnings call, the Prius starts at oh, $23,500, roughly half the cost of a $49,000 Model 3 starting price. And I don't even know what the average selling price of a Model 3 is. I mean, the, the average price of a Model 3 performance, probably $70,000, my guess. Well, Elon boasted that Tesla's shell, Tesla shells out virtually nothing on advertising and endorsements and relies heavily on word of mouth. I'll put a link to the interesting engineering article and the CNBC article in the show notes. Well, the UK's Guardian newspaper has been doing a bit of a profile on EV car clubs like well one of them is eCar it's part of Europe Car the rental company and eCar offers electric and hybrid cars and has a 145 of them on the road in the UK it's targeting people who do round trips so rather than people going from A to B and dropping the car off wherever they end up as some of the car share schemes allow eCar is all about returning it and placing it back on its original charging hub 
eCar has two membership options. There's a pay-as-you-go and a subscription. Pay-as-you-go costs a one-off £50 fee. That's about... hourly charges start from £5.50 for a small hatchback like the Renault Zoe. They go up to the Nissan Leaf level. Uh, Daily rates are about £50, and it costs £50 to join, like I say. So uh, there are different models around for different EV car clubs. I'd love to know from you, by the way, have you got one near you in your country, your city, your town? Uh, Let me know, and we can report that on the podcast. But what about subscribing to a car if you want one more long term? I mean, I'm talking about one in your driveway, your garage, outside where you live. Well, driving an EV without the commitment of buying one is the proposition for a new subscription service launched by the electricity company Mercury in New Zealand. Mercury is going to offer EVs as a service on a monthly subscription, meaning customers pay a monthly fee and can simply hand the car back when they're done, says Stuff magazine in New Zealand. And this is what I was talking about only a couple of days ago on this podcast, Uh, One of the electricity companies here put a similar thought on one of their forums online that I stumbled across, and they said, hey, here's an idea. If you could get your electricity company to provide you a car and an EV charger that will come and fit, and then you pay one bill, and that bill is for energy, so energy to drive, energy for your house, energy for your heating and cooking, Would you be up for it? And lots of people think it's a fantastic idea. As cars become less about petrol and more about energy and aligned with your electricity provider than your oil company provider. Well, Mercury in New Zealand will charge $469 a month for a first-gen Nissan Leaf, and that falls to $399 a month if you agree to a six-month term. Well, those fees include insurance, which is a big deal for younger drivers, certainly, maintenance, which there isn't really any on EVs, unlimited kilometres, and free delivery and pickup by a concierge at the beginning and the end of your subscription service. Well, moving on to Porsche, and the final story today is all about Porsche of Great Britain teasing the brand's upcoming electric Taycan performance car with a tweet. Now, the tweet depicted the camouflaged Taycan test mules, but it did promise the vehicle will manage 0-60 to in 3.5 seconds, reports the drive. That's not massively fast for a Porsche, but it is in good territory. Uh, The Drive website say this, and I quote, prime for comparison is the Tesla Model 3 performance, which Tesla claims to be capable of the superlative in 3.5 seconds, end quote. Well, well, I I don't want to pick them apart, but I'll just pick up on that sentence. Prime for comparison is the Tesla Model 3. No, the Model 3 is in no way a comparison to Porsche Taycan. This is what happened when EVs first came out and there was the Tesla Model S and the first Nissan Leaf and they would get compared because they had a battery. But you would never compare a small family car and a $150,000 luxury combustion car. It, It would be crazy. People would go, well, hang on. They're $100,000 apart, but because there were so few EVs around, the common factor was they've both got a battery. So many EVs got compared when they really shouldn't do. And you shouldn't compare a Model 3 to a Porsche Taycan. Anyway, the second part of their their article, uh, which says Tesla claims to be capable of 3.5 seconds. Uh, yes, they claim it. And yes, it can do it, because as more and more people, as thousands of people take delivery of their cars now, and more and more people are getting their Model 3 performance and posting YouTube videos, I don't believe that hundreds of people could fake it. So I, I do believe that, yes, three point late 3.1, 3.2, 3.5 on a bad day, uh, these YouTube videos, there's loads of them online now if you search for the Tesla Model 3 performance. So Tesla don't claim it. It actually does it. It makes it sound like there's some sort of doubt in that claim, and I didn't like that phrase. Uh, They say that uh, what independent testing that has been done seems to affirm Tesla's claim. Well, anyhow, I'll refer to my previous statement about hundreds of people faking YouTube videos. I I think their claim is probably right, by the way. And uh, the drive say that uh, Tesla claims 310 miles of range, which could beat the Porsche Taycan. Uh, I'll put a link to the article. I don't want to be unfair to it. I just think there was 
some comment to be made about that article. Uh, and I'll put a link to it so you can read it yourself in the show notes. One thing about the Porsche Taycan, by the way, is, okay, so 3.5 isn't uh, your eyes bleeding territory. And also, when it comes to the battery size, I don't think they're going to go very big. This is my prediction. Uh, I stand to be corrected. I'm normally wrong. I don't think Porsche are going to Porsche are going to mention the battery size if they can possibly help it. My prediction is they're going to go quite small on the Taycan battery to save weight, but they're going to go really big and PR and market the heck out of the fact that it's got 800 volt charging. It can charge really quickly, and that you do more of a kind of well in. In Formula One terms, splash and dash, where you dive into the pits, add fuel, and then head off really quickly. Uh, and what I mean by that is, is rather than carry all your energy around on a heavy battery, Porsche are going to go really big on doing those kind of sprints between ultra-fast chargers and then just topping up in 10 minutes. That's kind of where I see it going. Well, thank you very much to new Patreon supporters. Mark Robinson has joined as a new producer of the show and has actually upped, by the way, Mark Robinson actually upped his amount that he's giving, which is, I still, it kind of blows my mind a little bit that even one person uh, would support this podcast uh, and make it happen. And Martin Croft has joined as a new executive producer of the show. Martin, thank you so much for that. Time for our question of the week where we want to hear from you. Uh, this week's question of the week provided by myev.com is where you get to put your comments on YouTube and Facebook and email, which is hello at evnewsdaily.com. Well, myev.com want to ask you this. Do you really need all that electric range? How much range is enough range? And what's your ideal range for an EV? Either one you've got at the moment or one that you would look to buy in the future or a used one from something like their website. Well, how does that tie into battery charging speeds and charging locations? Would you charge only at work or at home? Is your ideal range 100 miles? Is 200 the magic number? Is 300 the magic number? We'd love to hear from you, and I'll read out the best comments in a few shows' time. Talking of shows, there's 215 previous ones on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher, and the blog at evnewsdaily.com. If you subscribe... And why wouldn't you? Because it's free. You also get them first and you get them automatically. And if in return you can leave me a little rate and review or maybe even check out patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. You really don't need to worry about that or think about doing the Patreon thing because I'm massively grateful for those people that are already helping me out. But if you do, well, I mean, have a look. And uh, you can say hi on Facebook. I'd love to hear from you on the socials by searching for EV News Daily. Uh, you'll find me. Have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you tomorrow.